The Orlando Magic have one of the three best young cores in the NBA in my opinion, as well as one of the brightest futures in the NBA overall. In fact, I'm so high on this Magic team that the title of the video reacting to the draft lottery would have been just, it's over if the Magic won the lottery. However, they ended up with pick 6 and pick 11 via the Bulls because of the Vucevic trade. And that seems like a robbery for the Magic, considering they got Wendell Carter Jr., Franz Wagner, and this 11th overall pick. And the Bulls have made the playoffs once and only have one playoff win during that time span. Even if the Magic didn't get the first overall pick, which they didn't, they were going to be in good shape regardless, because there's one player in particular I like for them at pick 6, and there are a few options they could take at pick 11 that I like. If they nail this draft, I do think the Magic could make a playoff push next season. Like I talked about in the last video about the Detroit Pistons, the Magic do have players that seem like established cornerstones already, which makes the fact that they won't get a chance at one of the big four prospects in this draft hurt a lot less. It starts with Paulo Bancaro, who I think has a legit franchise player and superstar potential. The 2022 first overall pick had a monster rookie season. He joined Luka Doncic and Donovan Mitchell as the only rookies over the last six seasons to average at least 20 points per game. He's just one of seven rookies in NBA history to be top 10 in free throw attempts per game in the season. At 6'10", 250 pounds, Paolo has the athleticism and fluidity that nobody that big should have any business having. His abilities and movement skills are a lot closer to a guard or wing than a power forward. He can create off the dribble, he has a really good handle, he's super strong and physical, he draws contact like a superstar already, he's a really good passer and I think he has potential to be a top tier playmaking forward in the league. He does need to improve his shot selection, decision making, and shot consistency. I think those things can improve over time with game speed reps. I don't think he'll be a great suitor, but I think he'll grow into a respectable one to the point he is a complete offensive player. This is someone that has a chance to put up monster all of our numbers in his NBA career. I think he could be an all-star in just his second NBA season, maybe be a 25 point per game scorer in his second NBA season. Not a guarantee, but based off what I saw as a rookie, if he takes a jump in year two, those things aren't out of the cards. I think he has a chance to be a superstar. Again, not a guarantee, but it isn't out of the cards just based off his physical tools, athleticism, skill, intangibles, and feel for the game. And 6'10", 250 pound off-bounds creating playmakers just don't grow on trees. And that's why I think he is the long-term centerpiece for the Magic. However, despite the fact that I think Paulo is going to be the franchise player long-term and potentially a future superstar, I do think Franz Wagner was a little bit better this season. Franz is the long-term second star for the Magic. He's a 6'10 wing that can create offense, is a good passer, and great defender. He has on off ball versatility, and he's just the perfect co-star for someone with Paolo's playstyle. I think you can make the argument that Franz was the best second year player in the NBA this season from his draft class. He put up good numbers, he was decently efficient, and he showed all the signs that we saw from him as a rookie, and those signs have been improved upon. Franz just fits the mold of versatility that the Magic want to make their identity of this rebuild. A tall player with an all around skill set and can be a really good scorer. Someone that I think could potentially be all NBA good one day. And the fact that this is someone I believe projects to be a second star on this particular team really goes to show you how much potential this Magic team has. The Magic also have two starters that I really like as well in terms of long-term fit. Wendell Carter Jr. who has really jump-started his career since being traded to the Magic. He's one of the most complete offensive bigs in the league. 
just solid to good at every aspect of offense that you would want him to be and a really good defender and Markel Fultz who's had a career resurgence as one of the better playmaking guards in the league when healthy and the shot is slowly getting there and I think it's on track based on what I've seen him do in Orlando to the point where he could get back to what he was at Washington in terms of suiting. So I really like those two pieces at the big man and point guard spots as well. I think they have a chance to add a final piece to the puzzle for the starting lineup at pick 6. I think the Magic should take OTE guard wing Asar Thompson with the 6th overall pick. The twin brother of projected top 5 pick and potentially someone that can go higher than 5, I would say close to 2 or 3, Amen Thompson, Asar isn't that far behind his twin brother. I compared Amen's athleticism to Akame from Akame Got Kill. Well, Asaru's athleticism is a lot like Akame's younger sister, Kurume. Not quite on the level of the sibling, but still elite in a majority of athletic traits, but also a bit stronger in terms of pure strength and reflexes. Asaru has elite vertical athleticism in terms of explosion and range that's not too far off from a man. He's also flexible and has great body control, he's quick and twitchy, has great speed, and I think he's stronger than a man in terms of pure strength. He's a bit bigger at 6'6", 220 pounds, compared to a man's 6'6", 215 pound frame. Asar is more of a pure connecting playmaker though. He has good feel, good accuracy, makes good reads and plays within the flow of the offense more. He's not quite as creative as a man in terms of primary playmaking traits, which is why I believe a man has more upside on top of being a bit better of an athlete. But I do think Asar is a more complete scorer. He's not a perfect one by any means and he does have similar flaws to a man, but he has more of a scoring mindset and he's a bit further along in terms of suiting when it comes to confidence and efficiency. However, I do think that Asaru has even more encouraging signs than a man does as a suitor, which does lead to him having higher suiting outcomes potentially. On top of that, Asaru can play with and without the basketball in his hands, he's great in transition, he can attack the basket, he draws contact well, and defensively, I think he has more upside than a man does. I think Asaru has an argument for best defensive wing in the draft. He's bigger and more physical than a man. His defensive feel is a bit higher. He has potential to maybe be the best shot block and guard wing in the NBA within a few years, while also having the lateral quickness and wingspan that give him unreal defensive ground coverage. He reminds me a bit of Andrew Wiggins in terms of projected role as a scorer that can work off of others and is competent off the ball and on the ball when needed. Wiggins has a different profile I would say overall. I think Wiggins was a better scorer entering the league. He has been a better suitor and even at the same stage I would say that Wiggins was a better suitor. But Asaru is a much better passer than Wiggins has ever been. And Asaru, in my opinion, is a better athlete with better traits. He's a bit bigger, he's a bit stronger. And that really says something because Wiggins has absurd athletic traits and I think Asaru's traits are even better. I think Asaru's connecting playmaking, feel for the game, athleticism, and defensive ability give him a higher floor than give him credit for. I think his ability on defense would work really well with bronze and that would be a ton of fun on that end of the floor, as well as his ability to impact games without on-ball reps as he continues to develop fits with this Magic team. Now obviously the Magic have more than just pick 6, they get pick 11 from the Bulls. And there are 3 guys I want to talk about in terms of potential picks at 11th overall. And all 3 of them fit a skill set that the Magic need as a bench player in terms of floor spacing, while also having upside to be more than that. Jet Howard, the 6 foot 8 wing from Michigan, one of the best shooters in the class. But he also has good connecting passing traits, 
good feel, a good handle, a better handle than giving credit for it, and some on-ball juice. He is worth a top 10 pick in my eyes, but he might not go top 10 even in mock drafts that I do because there, there are a lot of guys in this class that have top 10 potential grades for me. And I do think that 11 is probably the earliest he realistically goes. Now, he has fallen to like that mid-first round on most boards because of defensive inconsistencies and a rough end to the season. But I think his traits fit what the Magic need and the upside is intriguing enough for the Magic to consider him here. There's also Grady Dick, a 6'7 wing from Kansas, arguably the best suitor in the class, a decent athlete, has more on-ball potential than given credit for, and works great off the ball in terms of suiting and transition play. He's not quite the passer that Jet is in my opinion, but he is more consistent as a suitor. He does have to work on his defense, he's not good at navigating screens, gets bullied physically, and isn't a great lateral mover. However, I do think his strengths as a player are good enough to take at pick 11, but the thing is, he might not be on the board. Of the three players I'm talking about, he is the one that's projected to go the highest. He's getting looks in like that 7 to 10 range which is obviously before the Magic pick at 11, but if he's on the board at pick 11, it would be a good pick. And the final player is Derek Whitehead, a 6'6", 220-pound wing from Duke. He's the youngest of the three. In fact, he's a full year younger than both Brady Deck and Jed Howard. And he's a player that entered the season as a potential top 5 pick. However, due to injuries prior to the season, he had a slow start. And once he started to get his rhythm back, he got injured again. The injuries clearly had an effect on him because he wasn't close to the athlete he was as a senior in high school. And that was a year ago. That's not that long ago. However, given that he's one of the youngest players in the draft, has showcased high-level three-point shooting despite having a rough season, I do think he's still a lottery prospect. He brings an immediate skill set as an off-ball shooter, he has on-ball creating potential, and really good feel for the game. His ability to adapt to different circumstances than what he was prior to injuries makes me believe in his fit on any roster. He's battle-tested, he enrolled at Montford Academy at 13 years old, and he's played against other top picks like Cade Cunningham. OJ Barrett, Scotty Barnes, like Moses Moody, like lottery picks during his time at practice, like practicing with and against those guys, getting the learn from those guys. And the fact that he is battle tested really makes me believe in him as a prospect because you can't teach what he has learned through those practices. And that is valuable in my opinion. I do think it's worth taking him at pick 11 because at the very least you're getting a high feel for his spacing and you could potentially be getting a top 5 value at pick 11 because if he gets back to what he was as an athlete during his senior year of high school and so it's like the on ball stuff we saw during his senior year of high school that I really didn't get to showcase at Duke because it wasn't the role they asked of him you are getting a top 5 player in this draft. That's how good he could be. Now, it's not super likely that it happens, but it's not out of the cards. It reminds me a bit of AJ Griffin, you know, a young player for the class, but has an NBA ready frame. Somebody that, you know, is a great suitor, but showcased some on ball creating juice, but had his struggles as well. I do think AJ Griffin was further along as a prospect than Derek Whitehead. I think, again, AJ Griffin was a better suitor. AJ Griffin's like one of the best suitors we have ever seen in terms of one dumb prospect. And I think he showed more on ball creating juice than Derek did at Duke. Granted, I do think AJ Griffin, even though limited like Derek, he did get more on ball opportunities than Derek did at Duke. 
in Dewey did show enough encouraging flashes for me to believe in his on-ball potential, even though his role was limited, the flashes were encouraging enough. I think that it would be a great pick for them at 11. In fact, I think they should take him at 11. Of these three, I lean towards Derek Whitehead being the pick if I was running the Orlando Magic. Now clearly I'm not running the Orlando Magic. There's a reason I'm making videos on YouTube and someone is working in the NBA. So remember that. But if I had a choice, it would be Derek Whitehead. But you can't go wrong with any of these options. This pick will be a bench rotation piece because the starting five is kind of solidified already, especially if they draft the start Thompson. So getting a guy who is a good suitor, but also has upside to be more than that is important, and all three of these guys fit that description. The Magic have a lot of what you want in a rebuilding team. Potential cornerstones, solid to good supporting pieces, and draft assets that they can use to build the team along the same timeline as those guys develop together. On top of that, they have an identity that they want to build, and that is most important. They were a lot better than you would think they were this season, just based off the record. They went 34 and 48, which isn't a good record. It's below 500. It was the sixth worst record in the league and 13th in the Eastern Conference. But you have to look deeper than just the overall record for the season because it doesn't tell the full story they started the season 5 and 20 which put them on a 16.4 win pace however after the 25th game of the season they played a lot better they went 29 and 28 over the rest of the season, which would put them at a 41.7 win pace over those games. So over the first 25 games of the season, they played at a pace that would have given them the worst record in the league. And then after that, over the next 57 games, they played at a pace that would have them in the play-in. And they played well against good teams. They had wins against Boston, Denver, and Miami. Three of the four teams in the conference finals. Two of them will be in the finals. And the thing is, they played those teams when the Stars were playing. Denver had Jokic when the Magic beat the Nuggets. Miami had Jimmy when the Magic beat the Heat. And he also had Bam. Boston had Tatum and Brown when the Magic beat the Celtics. Also, they won those games by double digits. They also have wins against other playoff teams. A 13 win against Brooklyn, a 10 point win against Philly, a close win against the Warriors, a close win against the Knicks. They played well against playoff teams. And how they played after an awful start to the season makes me believe in them as a potential playoff team next season. If they get a defensive impact connecting playmaker to Sir Thompson, and a four spacing scorer like a Jet Howard, Grady Dick, or Drake Whitehead, it will put them in a great spot. This is a special young team that has a chance to be even better next season. I think they will be a play-in team next season because they played like a play-in team for nearly 70% of this season. This is a core that will carry over a lot of what they were able to do last season into next season and maybe be even better with a good draft. And they're just getting started. These guys are just scratching the surface of their potential. Franz isn't even close to as good as he can be. Paolo is just scratching the surface of how good he could potentially be. And that's true for the guys that they'll draft. That's even true for Wendell and Markel. More Markel because of the injuries and getting back in rhythm. But Wendell could be even better. And the fact that I think that they can be as good as I believe they will be next season isn't based around the idea of them taking a massive leap. It's based around what we saw this season, how they played for nearly 70% of the season. I think that they will be playing good regardless of what they do in the draft. But if they get this draft right, they will be even better than that in my opinion. I think that above 500 is not out of the question with this team if they get this draft right. And if they get this draft right, 
and those players that they draft develop properly and Paulo becomes the player that everyone believes he can become which is a superstar if Franz becomes that all-star all-NBA player that I believe he can be if Wendell Carter is that steady force in the middle that he has been if Fultz can get healthy if Suggs can develop if Cole Anthony can be that long-term sixth man they won't just be good they will be the biggest nightmare for the rest of the NBA. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, I'm notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball all the time, so if that interests you, I really think you enjoy this channel. And liking, subscribing are the two best ways you can help me out. Help support the channel, helps me on the YouTube algorithm so more people find my videos. So in turn, help the channel grow so I can make more content for you guys in the future. Let's try to get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. And let me know what you think the Magic should do in the comment section below. Who should they take at pick 6? Who should they take at pick 11? I know there are more names than the 4 that I mentioned in the draft that they could take, so... I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you think they should do and what do you think about the future of this Magic team. I'm very high on them. I think they have a chance to be a mainstay contender for years to come in the future. But what do you think? Love to hear all of that in the comment section below. But with that being said, have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next one.